So I've been really critical of people who Joe Biden is appointing to his administration, and I think for good reason. And I've made my arguments, but I think it's really important that we hear from people who have been activists for quite some time because their perspective is very valuable because they know the intricate details about how specific companies hurt communities in this country. So The Intercept reports Biden EPA transition team member helped DuPont dodge responsibility for PFOA. Michael McCabe, a former EPA official and aide to Joe Biden, led the defense of the toxic PFAS chemical PFOA. Now, the fact that anyone associated with a company who did any polluting whatsoever is going to work for Joe Biden in and of itself is scandalous, but I'm not going to share my opinion about this because I think that Erin Brockovich, a longtime activist, she said everything that I wanted to say in an open letter to Joe Biden titled, Dear Joe Biden, Are You Kidding Me? And she writes, Dare I say, I had hopes that this new administration would usher in the dawning of a new day. As picks for President-elect Joe Biden's Environmental Protection Agency transition team were announced, I felt concerned and disheartened about a chemical industry insider being on the list. Are you kidding me? Michael McCabe, a former employee of Biden and a former Deputy Environmental Protection Agency Administrator, later jumped ship to work as a consultant on communication strategy for DuPont during a time when the chemical company was looking to fight regulations of their star chemical, PFOA, also known as C8. The toxic man-made chemical is used in everything, from waterproof clothes, stain-resistant textiles and food packaging to non-stick pans. The compound has been linked to lowered fertility, cancer, and liver damage. The Guardian reported this week that Harvard School of Public Health professor Felipe Grangin, who studies environmental health, warns that PFAS chemicals, of which PFOA is one, might reduce the efficacy of a COVID-19 vaccine. This smells of the dawn of the same old. To quote the WHO, meet the new boss same as the old boss. It should go without saying that someone who advised DuPont on how to avoid regulations is not someone who we want advising this new administration. PFOA pollutes the blood of nearly every American and can pass from mother to unborn child in the womb. This toxic product of industry is a stable compound not easily broken down in the environment, giving it the nickname Forever Chemical. Scientists have found it in living beings across the globe, from animals living in the depths of the sea to birds on remote islands. The Environmental Protection Agency has set no enforceable national drinking water limits for perfluorinated chemicals including PFOA. Tens of thousands of community drinking water systems across the country have never even been tested for these contaminants. McCabe started managing DuPont's communications with the EPA about the toxic chemical in 2003, according to an article in The Intercept. This was the time in which DuPont faced a barrage of litigation after the company dumped 7,100 tons of PFOA-filled waste in West Virginia, which made its way into the drinking water of 100,000 people. Countless members of the community faced debilitating illnesses as a result. The legal battle with the company was turned into the film Dark Waters in 2019. Mind you, DuPont suspected that their product was harmful since the 1960s. Experiments they conducted in 1961 showed that PFOS affected the livers of dogs and rabbits. McCabe's work inevitably contributed to staving off costly cleanup and additional regulation headaches for the company. Are we the people supposed to trust a former DuPont man in a transition team tasked with reviewing the chemical safety board? Is this how the newly elected leadership wants to start what is supposed to be a healing and unifying administration? And the answer to that is yes. Because Joe Biden is going to be a healer and a unifier. Not for the working class, though. For the capitalist and business class. For corporate America. They're all going to love him. Because his policies aren't going to be that different from Donald Trump. There's going to be some positive changes. But for the most part, you know, there, there's no mean tweets. People can basically ignore Joe Biden. He's not this spectacle as Trump is. And, you know, it's... It's easier for people to put aside all of Joe Biden's flaws and go back to brunch and pretend as if everything is copacetic, when in actuality, Joe Biden needs to be fought. It's not a matter of pushing Joe Biden to the left, because that would suggest that he was ever malleable in the first place. It's a matter of fighting Joe Biden, fighting him on things like this. Because an industry shill for DuPont, that's not someone who's going to be looking out for us. And the fact that anyone... I don't care if you're a corporate Democrat or a Republican would appoint someone like this. It's idiotic. It's idiotic because you're putting someone in control 
that doesn't care if your own family is poisoned. I mean, rich people aren't completely shielded in their mansions from bad drinking water. And, you know, they, they need breathable air too. So it's, it's self-destructive and it's self-defeating for an administration that supposedly claimed that, oh, well, he, he knows the task ahead and he's got to be like the next FDR. Give me a fucking break. Give me a fucking break. It's why when there are people who um, tried to make the case for Joe Biden by championing his so-called progressive platform. I mean, this is why we were skeptical, because Joe Biden has a long hist history of doing things like this. And Aaron Brockovich, it's important that she speaks up because she knows about all of this. She has firsthand experience dealing with this. There's literally a movie about Aaron Brockovich. So, um, you know, it's not surprising, but because we're not surprised doesn't mean that we should uh, be unmoved and not be infuriated and not call him out. We have to educate people about these sort of things. And I think that Aaron Brockovich is doing a public service by calling out Joe Biden here. Mike is a total loser. So don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.